And um, please, I would like you to join me to receive to Lagos Island District in this commencement service of our convocation, the National Secretary of Four Square Gospel Church in Nigeria, Reverend Abayomi Ishola Oyinloyo. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Please, will we greet him in our normal way of welcoming servants of God? Uh, can I lead you to do that? Okay, so let us say, Eka Abosa, Eko Isha Oluwa, Oluwa Masagbara Indotu, Eminyago, Tiwano Nikuru, Emajino Siwao, Chapel of Blessing Lawa, Tatinjola Jesu. Now, national, uh, this four square answer, please. Four square will stand for, for the, the living word, for, for the world. Your seat. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's my prayer that on the last day, all of us will see each other Amen. and we'll sing hallelujah chorus together. We have a peace this evening and as you listen, be blessed in Jesus' name. I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus, who died upon the cruel tree? Just think of this great sacrifice at Calvary. I know my Savior expelled the best from me. How many are the laws that I have lifted? How many are the chains I have to free? best from me.
feel I don't know if his heart is broken too How many of the lost that I have lifted How many of the chains I have to free Hallelujah. Thank you, choir, for that song. Uh, if we are measured on the scale of what Jesus has done, you know, it's, it's impossible for us to really do anything that uh, we can say is enough. It can't be enough, but we will try our best. And His grace will be what? Sufficient. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Please clap for the choir. Beautiful presentation by the choir. Thank you. Uh, let me start by saying good afternoon to all our esteemed ministers, leaders, and uh, certified church workers. <laughs> Pastors in process, <laughs> as Daddy has put it, praise the Lord. But really, uh, I want to appreciate God's grace in the life of God's servant, our Daddy, Reverend J. Lamidi, Joseph Akambi, <laughs> Lamidi. Uh, is a man of God par excellence. The grace of God is upon his life. He has uh, sufficiently introduced me, but I would say that he missed out in two areas, but I'm coming to, to that. I want to thank God for every one of us. It's God's grace that has given us this commission to work for him. And it's God that has given us strength. He has given us guidance and direction. And to him alone be all glory, be all honor, be all adoration. Do you agree with me? Can we just uh, appreciate our Father in heaven? Say, God, thank you. You are a faithful God. You are a righteous God. You are wholesome. You are truthful. You are the life giver. You are the life changer. Because I don't want to disturb the choir. Otherwise, I would have sang that song. You know? Should I? Life giver. Life changer. Jehovah. The covenant keeping God. Destiny helper. Mountain mover, Jehovah, you are the covenant keeping God. Covenant keeping God, covenant keeping God, Jehovah, you are the covenant keeping God. Oh yes, covenant keeping God. Oh yeah, covenant keeping God. Jehovah, you are the covenant. That is your name, and even more. But today we bow in humble adoration. 
We thank you for the grace that you are giving unto us, the gift of life, the gift of ministry. We bless you, we worship you. I miss many other things. You have endowed us with good health, the gift of family, and most importantly, the gift of salvation. Receive our worship in Jesus' name. Amen. We are praying that you will give us illumination. Amen. We want to understand more those things that will help us to do the work that you have committed into our hands. Please help us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we will not miss out in anything that you have for your people tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Amen. Let your name be glorified. We thank you because you are a faithful God. Lord, the theme of this convocation is grace for great exploits. We pray that as you release unto us at this starting point, the understanding of what we should be doing, we shall move to great exploits in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise you, the Lord. Yes, thank you so much. I told you that our Dio said so many things, but he omitted two things. But let me also appreciate our ZSs. Please help me to clap for them. <laughs> Wonderful people of God. Actually, all of them are my friends, so thank you very much. Our DS, where is the district treasurer? Okay, please. I acknowledge you. Thank you very much. Let me to oh, this Baba is always treasure everywhere. <laughs> Remember today you are welcome. Ah, uh, from is made in heaven, made in heaven. Hallelujah. All right. So the two things: one said I'm relational. I'm relational with him. I am friend. I am this. I am that. But he forgot to say that I'm actually a spiritual son. And I need to have that. <laughs> Hallelujah. The second thing, by the grace of God, God knows the way of every man. As a matter of fact, the Bible says the part of a good man is ordered by God. There are things you do, you don't even know why you are doing them. Uh, but God also uses people along the line. I remember... In 2005, I was ordained as a reverend in 2005. And uh, is it 2005? Yes. It was our ZDS day. And he called me to Oregon and gave me the form. Actually, I once attended the interview in 2002. And in my own mind and opinion, actually, I was qualified. But I had an issue. Because I just moved from one zone to another while we were pioneering a church. And, uh, you know, the powers that be at that time were not too disposed to that. So they said no. So because of that, and also the fact that in my own mind, I just said, tie two is nothing to me. He means to do the work. Tie two is nothing. So I made up my mind that I don't want to be a reverend. I just want to remain a what? A pastor. So 2000, and they didn't do ordination in 2004. I think the, in one of the years was skipped. The other year I did not, I did not, I did not fill the form. I refused to fill it. Then in 2005, he now said, I must fill this form. I said, I'm not. He said, no, you don't understand. He begged me. Oh, this Baba, he begged me for more than one hour in his office. He said, you know, it's not because of today. It's because, you know, you don't understand. And I, I said, no, I don't need this, sir. Uh, it's no offense. I'm just okay. He said, no. When I now look at myself, that, ah, I lash it to my name, okay. You know, Brazan knows that sometimes when I stand, I stand. So I said, ah, okay. Not because of me, but because of him. I sank. That year I became, I was ordained a reverend. And I think that is the only reason that I can be appointed 
as national secretary. Because there's no way <laughs> you can't stand on nothing. It's a principle in law called impari delicto. So you cannot stand on nothing. So I do appreciate, I fight with him a lot. When he was my ZS, he knows very well. Praise the Lord. But take it or leave it. This man, <laughs> this man is a man with a large heart. I love him. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Uh, lest I waste time, I will rush quickly. And I trust God to help us. I'm here with Pastor Judah and uh, my pilot, David. God bless you. We are talking about uh, admin and first square polity. You belong to a church that is well structured. You belong to a church that is well organized. Uh, what carries the body is the skeleton. And first core has a structure that is able to carry out true and true. Uh, unfortunately, because many of us don't know this, we talk down on our organization. We are sometimes ignorant. We compare apple with orange. But if you want to get this right, you have to compare apple with apple and orange with orange. You know, I remember for Skirian looks at a one-stop shop. I, I call it a one-stop shop. Or one-stop, just a locational church. And then compare us, you know, somebody comes in here now and says, ah, this first square people. What here, Paul? There are not many. No, no, this is just pastor. But the truth is that first square is a multi-site church. And in Nigeria alone, we have about 4,500 churches by the grace of God. So, if you understand it very well, if we are to be meeting together in one stop, you can't imagine if you have such church in Lagos Island, I think Lagos State Government will give you quick notice because you are going to create what? Problem. So you need to understand your church. So that sometimes some of the things that you see and say, look at it, you know, you will really understand it. So by polity, we mean the method in which the affairs of men are managed. And first of all, polity, therefore, is an insight uh, into what constitutes the structure. I've told you the structure of Foursquare as an organization and how our affairs or its affairs is being managed in an orderly manner that will achieve cohesion and church growth. So polity is about how we are structured and our fears are managed so that we are orderly. Otherwise, there will be anomaly and there will be chaos. You'll find a situation whereby things are done out of proportion. You don't need to look at anybody's eyes to say, okay, this is because I know Pastor Oyegua, I know uh, Pastor Azan, or I call them Pastor, sorry. Uh, you understand, you can change it if you like. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. You know, I know them, so I have to do things uh, differently. No, you, you are going to create a system of distortion. You are going to create a system whereby things uh, will just uh, not work. But for square, sometimes I keep wondering, the people who put some of these structures together, we are not as educated as we are today. But I guess it's the Holy Spirit. I really help them. Let's, uh, let's start from where we started in 1923. First square started in the United States and when the Angelos Temple was dedicated in California. Uh, today we have the first square church in America uh, referred to as the ICFG, International Church of the First Square Gospel. And today we are in 146 countries of the world the founder is Lady Evangelist Amy Sempu Mafasi. I'm sure I'm not saying anything new to anybody here. I might say something new to you. However, in 1955, a missionary couple came to Nigeria, Harold and Faye Cortis, and they started this church somewhere in, uh, it used to be King George. I think King George is here now in, uh, I think around Lagos Island here, but it used to be King George. They, place that we call uh, Abad Macaulay, 
So the exact point of uh, Swiss sensation, I don't know how, how many of us know the Swiss sensation, just at the turning to where you'll be going towards Akiwumi. That is the point where four squares started. It was called a Yankee Bar. I just, sometimes I, when I go to that Swiss sensation, I've gone there a few times, I would say, ah, how are these people using our, you know, won't we think of buying this place and just uh, making people to come and do uh, spiritual tourism to this place? Praise the Lord. And we bless God. Uh, the church has continued to move and was greater from strength to strength today. We have 4,351 4, churches in 168 districts and 844 zones. It's not only limited to Nigeria. Church has also spread. Genesis 49.22 says, Joseph shall be a fruitful vow that we spread his branch across where? The wall. Genesis 49.22. Just like that, the prophecy became fulfilled in our church as we spread to neighboring countries of Republic of Benin, Ghana, Gambia, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, Central African Republic. And in most of these places, especially in the West Coast, the church has been nationalized. In other words, they run their affairs. That is why today they are not our appendage. Uh, I once went to the National Convention of the Church in Bini, in their camp. They are quite sizable. And thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Now, your, our church is very, very distinct because we have things that most other churches don't have. And that's not a statement of pride. It's just a statement of adoration to what God has been able to do and put in place over a generation. First square distinctive, that's the num number three. What I've just read out to you was first square history. What I'm now talking about now is first square what? Distinctive. What makes us to stand out? I will say four things there, first square basic documents. Whenever a pastor is being installed, he'll be giving these documents. First square, the Holy Bible. Everybody knows the Bible, so don't, me, don't let me waste time on that. It's our grand norm of practices and beliefs. Anyone that does not believe in the Bible is not a first career. Hello? We don't believe in extra biblical uh, activity. So somebody say, bring cutlass to church so that uh, you will kill your enemy. You know that something is wrong where? You are, a, you are pastors now. You understand what I'm saying? Many things are happening. I used to be in a particular church, and opposite our church was another praying house. I'm mindful of the word I'm using. People pray there. Today, in fact, there was a day, he asked them to bring obituary, obituary paper. And one lady went there, and when they got there, they said, that obituary is representing your enemy. And uh, then the lady opened the one she brought. The woman was 88 years. So he said, God told her that uh -huh, since you have made that person your enemy, your problem will be 88 years. <laughs> so she ran across to our church with the obituary paper that we should, <laughs> we should pray for her. Say, so, uh -huh. Sometimes, let me leave them. Number two document is the first square constitution. So in other words, uh, our practices as pastors, as leaders, as ministers, must be biblical. And that's why we give it to our pastors when they are being installed. The second document is first square constitution. Has anybody seen first square constitution before? I've not seen it before. Not seen it here. Okay, otherwise I'll ask them to bring those things from the car. You know, first square constitution. First square is a very constitutional church. The only thing that supersedes and sets aside the constitution in first square is what? The Bible. And uh, I think even in construing it, people are very mindful of the Bible. Very, very mindful. And the last constitution was amended in 2019. And that's why we always refer, it as, uh, refer to it as the constitution and statement of faith as amended in when? 2019. So guys in our administration of the church, 
Every pastor must be cubed. Every leader must be cubed so that we are not going outside it. The third is the employee's handbook. First choir is a church that has a lot of employees. All pastors are employees. All inducted pastors are what? We are all employees, including the general overseer in first choir. That's the beauty of our own. Praise. So the, the general overseer is number one what? Employee. So we are all employees. And so we, employees will normally have service uh, condition. Okay. You have it. This is employee handbook. I was, okay. This is employee handbook, in case you have not seen it. This is the constitution, and this is the guideline on a ceremony, and this is the arms and ministries book, first class, all these books, they are distinctive. We call them first class basic documents, and they are to guide us. The next thing on the distinctive is the first class logo. We have the first class logo, of course, the cross. The cross, because we adopted at the time, some people were using the American one, were linear. But in the last administration, not this one, we came, if you remember the camp, and we all said we'll make it, uh, we'll make it like this, in a box. Abby, four, do you have elsewhere? All right. Uh -huh. So you have the cross. Of course, you have the dove. And you have the cup. And finally, you have the crown. They're all on different background. The cross is on scarlet. The dove on yellow or gold. The cup on blue. And the crown on, on what? Purple. It's not red, though. Actually, purple. Praise the Lord. And that talks about our four beliefs. Jesus Christ, what? Our Savior. That's the cross. The dove is Jesus Christ, baptizer with the Holy Spirit. The cup is Jesus Christ, our healer. And then the crown is Jesus Christ. Every first one minister should know that our message is complete. You don't need to add to it, it's complete. And the next one is the first square flag. I think I was seeing it on the projector. All right. It was projected just now. First square flag. Of course, you have the four colors. You can see it. However, our flag is on motion. It's not in a solid form. It's uh, on motion. And some few explanations. You see the, the letter four. That letter four and square. You see the square, the four is on the square. Uh, they lie upon a Bible. And that Bible, uh, which lie upon an open Bible. The four and square signify the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, that it is complete. What that particular logo means is complete. You don't preach any other thing. You don't add to it. You don't what? Remove from it. It's also universal. The gospel applies to every human being. There is nobody you preach the gospel to that cannot be saved. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Even if he has a... Although our children are all having this thing now. You know before, when you see this thing, you know the people that have it. Our children are wearing the kind of trouser that uh, is confusing these days. Praise the name of the Lord. But in those days, when you see it like that, you know that... Uh, I want to bleak lily. So the gospel is universal. And the gospel is solid. Nothing can change the gospel. Even if the best of all men says they don't want to, they don't want to follow through again, it, the gospel remains the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's balanced. Very, very balanced. God is truthful to his word. You know, it's in Psalm 18, verse 30 said, as for the, for the Lord, his ways are what? Perfect. His ways are perfect. So the first square flag is hoisted on the right side of the altar. Of course, uh, 
This is it. This is the flag. Can you see the flag now? Right side facing the what? The congregation. But from the congregation, it's going to be where? On the left. You need to understand that. You know, I go to some churches. The people sweeping have already rearranged. <laughs> and if you don't know, you will not know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then we have the first square anthem. The first square anthem. And it's in four stanzas. Each of the stanzas also talk about Jesus as what? The Savior. The second one talks about Jesus as what? The baptizer with the Holy Spirit. The third one talks about what? As the healer, it talks about him as a great physician, sympathizing, you know. And the last one talks about him coming quickly, coming back. So, today is not the day for the song. But at least, as a good minister, you should know the first two offhand quickly. And then the third one and the fourth one, you, you should can follow through. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm saying it because uh, I want to be very truthful. There are portions of our brain that can catch some things quickly. That's why you see the day when uh, children are having their, their week or their Sunday, they will come home. Some of them will read a whole book. When it's women, eh? What happens? They said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Psalm 23. Who will not know how to read that one now? That's what they will.